Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the previous lectures, we have seen all about how we can handle big data on our Hadoop cluster. But from this lecture, we are going to discuss a little bit about how Hadoop handles its resources. So as you already know that Hadoop is a distributed system and you can run as many of the commodity hardware in parallel to process the big data. But there are some resources or you can say the technologies that work under the hood to make this all happens. And the most important one is Hadoop YAN. So it stands for yet another resource negotiator. It's a cool name, isn't it? As the name suggests, it's a resource manager for our Hadoop cluster. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about what is YAN, what are its features and why it is introduced in the first place. And also we'll take a deep dive to learn about the components of YAN and its process flow. So without further ado, let's get into it. So Apache YAN is the resource management tool and it also used for job scheduling for our Hadoop cluster. So it's one of the most core component of Hadoop and is responsible for allocating the resources for various applications which are running on our Hadoop cluster. And it also helps us to schedule different tasks which are to be executed on the different cluster of nodes. So as you already know, it stands for yet another resource negotiator and it was introduced in the Hadoop version 2 to improve some of the cons which were present in Hadoop 1.0 version. So this YAN significantly expanded the potential of our cluster because the original first version had closely paired the HDFS which is our storage layer with the processing engine of Hadoop which is MapReduce. So due to which MapReduce also function as the resource manager as well as the processing engine. So as a result Hadoop first version could only run MapReduce application and it was a very big con for our Hadoop cluster. So let's say if you want to run Hive, you have to run it on top of MapReduce so that the Hive query will then convert it into the MapReduce job and then it is submitted to a Hadoop cluster and we cannot use another query engine such as Tez to take the advantage of direct acyclic graph and you can forget about the most popular technology right now which is Apache Spark which again uses DAG and it does not rely on the MapReduce, which was the mandatory technology to process the data in the first version. So YAN did make a lot of sense to integrate different processing engines with our Hadoop cluster. So that is the reason YAN enabled Hadoop to support the varied type of processing as well as broader array of application. So for example, we can now interactively query as well as integrate streaming data and real-time analysis using Apache Spark and other processing engines and it does that simultaneously with MapReduce batch jobs as well. So that is the power of Apache YAN. So before discussing how it works and its core components, let's discuss some basic features of YAN. So the first one is scalability. So the scheduler of YAN allows us to extend and manage thousands of node and cluster. So you can add as many of commodity hardware into a Hadoop cluster and it will process your data in parallel way and makes your system way more scalable. The second one is compatibility. So this YAN supports existing MapReduce application without any issues. That's why it makes it very compatible for Hadoop first version as well. The next one is the utilization of our Hadoop cluster. So YAN supports dynamic utilization of cluster which will give us the capability to optimize the cluster utilization. And the last one is also important multi-tenancy. So as it allows multiple engines access thus giving every organization a benefit of multi-tenancy. So these are some basic features of YAN and why it makes sense in the modern world where there are variety of data sources as well as different data processing engines. Now let's talk about some of the main components of YAN architecture. So these are some major components of YAN architecture. And as you can see in this figure, these are some components and how they tie together to act as a resource allocator. So the first one is client. So client means nothing but it submits the MapReduce job to our resource manager. So that is our next component. So a resource manager will accept the job submissions from the client and then schedules a job and allocates resources to them. So resources are nothing but the nodes in our cluster, which does all the groundwork to process our data. And it is a master daemon of YAN and also responsible for management among all the application. 
so whenever it receives some request it forwards it to the corresponding node manager and allocates resources for completion of that request and it has some two major components the first one is a scheduler and the second one is a application manager so as the name suggests scheduler will be used for scheduling based on the allocated application and the resources which are available so it means it does not perform other tasks such as monitoring or tracking and it does not guarantee a restart if the task is fail and the next component is application manager so application manager is responsible for accepting that application and negotiating the first container from the resource manager and it also restart the application if the task is fail so that is the task of the application manager and not the scheduler scheduler is only meant for scheduling based on the allocated resources and application manager is used for negotiating as well as restarting the application if the task is failed the next one is a node manager so node manager is installed on each node in the cluster and functions monitoring and reporting of the resource manager so that is the task of the node manager so it takes care of all the nodes in the cluster and manages the application and workflows for that particular nodes so this means its primary job is to track the health of the resource manager and it sends the heartbeats with the health status of the nodes and it is also responsible for creating container processes and starts them on the request of the application master so that is our next component so the application master is a single job which is submitted to the framework and is responsible for negotiating resources with the resource manager and it also tracks the status and monitoring progress of a single application so that is the task of the application manager and you heard about container so you may ask what really is a container so container is nothing but a physical collection of resources such as ram or cpu cores or a disk on a single node so these containers are invoked by container launch context which is also known as clc and it records the information such as environment variables as well as security tokens and other dependencies so this is all about the major components of yarn now let's discuss how this application workflow happens in our hadoop yarn so that is our next topic so as you can see in this figure this is the process flow of our yarn architecture so we will discuss this one by one so as you can see these are all the process flow and its order so the first one is the client submits an application to the resource manager which is the first process and once resource manager receives the application it allocates the container to start the application manager so this is the second process the third process is application manager register itself with the resource manager this is the third step so it again comes back to the resource manager so the fourth one is also application manager negotiates the containers from the resource manager so it again come to the resource manager for negotiating purpose the fifth one is application manager will notify the node manager to launch the container so once its negotiation is done it goes to the node manager to launch the containers and then application code is executed in the container so whatever the code has submitted by the client will be executed on the node manager then the next one which is the seventh one is nothing but client will contact resource manager to monitor the application status so to keep the status of the application it is the task of the resource manager as well as the application manager and it sends the signal back to the client for tracking purpose and the last one is once everything is done the application manager unregisters with the resource manager and we will get the required result so this is how the process flow and yarn works under the hood so for example if you have submitted a map reduce job or let's say a spark job onto our hadoop cluster this is all happening under the hood to give you your required results so either it could be the results which can be displayed on the console as well as writing the data or reading it back from the hdfs whatever it is but the process will remain the same for every execution of our application so this is how yarn helps to allocate resources and process our data efficiently whatever the data engine it is it could be apache spark or tez execution engine or map reduce as well it doesn't matter 
The task of Yarn is only to allocate resources and act as a resource manager for our Hadoop cluster. So I hope you got a clear understanding of how Yarn works, its basic components, its features, as well as the process flow of Yarn. I hope you like this video. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.